Hey, Rachel Miner, aloha and welcome back. It's been a while. So glad you're here. And I'm excited today because we're going to talk a little bit about stress. And with everything that's been going on in the world, I think everybody has a lot of stress right now. So I want to talk about stress, how it affects you, um, things you can do about it. I'm somebody that has always been high stress. And you could probably tell every time you go, to like massage my shoulders right here at the top of my neck and you can feel how tight my muscles are and I'm always like tense and stuff like that. But I'm somebody who um, probably pushes the stress down inside me and just keeps going and I, I run on high stress very well, which over the years has kind of worn me down, you know? And it's not healthy to just stay with stress all the time. So I've learned a few things over the years to help manage my stress. I've learned a few things over the years about how the stress has negatively infect, impacted me. And so hopefully I can share some of that with you guys today and give you a better insight and maybe you can, how you can handle some stress in your own life. So um, to start out, uh, to explain stress a little bit, stress is something that your body, um, uses for both positive and negative things because you can have that flight or fight mo flight or fight flight or fight mode oh my goodness my tongue twister today and it's good for you in certain situations like it'll keep you safe and it'll like let you know if there's danger and sometimes you can have stress when you're like excited over something that's good and you still get that racing heart rate and all those things and it's like the same effect as like you know when something's chasing you and you have that racing heart rate and you know and all those kinds of things and so if you want to think of stress think of it like a flashlight okay when you need it and it's good you can turn on that flashlight and you can have that light okay and then we don't need it you just shut it off and you wait till you need it again. So if something comes into your life, okay, you got this flight or fight, turn on the flashlight, you got it. The stress kicks in your adrenals and everything and you got your blood pumping and you're excited and you, you get through what it is and then you're like, okay, I'm over it. I'm gonna shut off that flashlight, okay? What happens when we have too much stress is we leave the flashlight on and then usually what happens is the battery burns out and you become overstressed and burned out. And when you have too much stress and you never shut off the flashlight, it just continually stays on. You continually stay in flight or fight mode and you never come down. It starts to cause health issues. Stress can literally shut down the organs in your body. It can literally cause so much problems in your body and you'll be like I don't know all of a sudden like I had all of these health issues arise and it can be a sign of high high stress high high stress and that you're not dealing with it properly and then because you have high stress and you're not dealing with it you become stressed over the stress and it's this vicious cycle that never goes away okay I mean think of it like you're walking down the street and this dog jumps out of a bush and you're like oh my gosh there's a dog he's kind of scary looking he's growling at me i don't think it's very safe and i want to leave you can you have a couple choices slowly walk away briskly walk or run you know like whatever you feel if you feel in danger and you need to run you know run but if that dog were to continually chase you, how long do you think you could keep running before you just burnt out of energy and you couldn't run anymore? Like you probably give a good sprint, get away from him for a little while, but if he kept just chasing you and chasing you and chasing you, like eventually you'd just be so exhausted, you'd have to stop. And he, you know, whether he attacked you or licked you, you know, but he wouldn't catch up to you. <clears throat> so you grab a drink of water. Okay, so that is like your flight or fight mode. Okay, so some of the things you can do is there are is to look at the stress because there are stresses in our life that we have control over and there are stresses in our life that we do not have control over it. Okay, 
if I stress over getting a test done, whether it's for school or work or something, that stress I have control over because maybe I procrastinated and I'm stressed because I waited to the last minute, or maybe I could um, plan ahead of time, study more, and then go, okay, I don't need to stress because I've studied and I will just do my best. You know, like those are things you have control over. Um, worrying about things in the world that we don't have control over sometimes is stress that's unneeded. And there's a lot going on in the world and there's a lot of stress and there's a lot of fear. And I think the adversary in our world like creates that fear to cause stress in us and it's not healthy for us. And I think like, Another wave of the pandemic is the, the health issues and the mental health issues that's causing on people, the stress. And, okay, you lose your job. That is stress that you, you know, it's there and you don't have any control over it. But it's how you react to things that you still might, okay, I don't have control if I got fired or not, but I do have control of how I react about it. And I can crumble up into a ball and say, I can't handle this, life's over. Or I can go, okay. I was thrown this challenge. I got some stress. What am I going to do about it? Okay. Have hope. That's the first thing you can do is have hope that you can handle this situation. Have hope that there are better days. I don't know how many of you have been through trials where you're just like, I don't know if I can handle this. And then you get through it and you're like, wow, like I am a much better, stronger person because I got through that. Well, when you have a situation that you're not sure again, in your brain, go back to those situations where you made it through. And you're like, remember like five years ago when this happened in our life? And like, we made it through. And that tells us that we can make it through together and we can make it through again. And I got my spouse or I got my kids or I got my family or I got friends that help support me through these things. So it's how you react to things. So we can always have hope. We can always have hope that better days are to come. We can have hope that we can make it through this challenge. We can have hope that even if we don't have control of the situation, we have control over our mind and how we react. Most of the time, emotions and feelings are, are things we have attached in our brain. Like fear, even pain, you know, like um, sometimes it's all in our brain of like how we've attached it. Um, hurt, heartache. Are things we've attached now yeah if somebody comes and pinches me but the pain of maybe heartache pain inside us it's that we've attached emotions to an event and so when that event happens again we've attached these emotions to them and if we can realize that the event itself is not the emotion but it's our brain that's attached to the emotion then we don't have to have that same emotion on that event there are facts and we can stick to the facts and we can go X, Y, and Z happened. My car broke down on the side of the road. Okay. That's a fact. I'm going to have to call a tow truck, call a family member or somebody to come help me. Okay. That's a fact. Okay. To like have anxiety and stress and like, just be like, I can't handle this. I can't handle this. Ah, everything always happens to me. And my car always breaks down. Ah, like that victim mentality and that stress and that, and that anxiety and that fear is how you're reacting to the situation. And if we can realize that those emotions are just feelings that we have attached to a situation, then it's easier to step back and look at it through like a looking glass. And to kind of, I always say, envision yourself like hovering over yourself and envision yourself like looking at this situation. And if you looked at the situation on the outside, could you look at it rationally and like see the other person's point of view, see your point of view, see why maybe you thought that way, maybe they, they thought it was this way. And then you can rationally look at the facts without the emotions and that helps you deal with the emotions. So you have the hope, the hope that you can make through this, the hope that maybe you can see it from another perspective, the hope that you can control how you react to situations, even if you cannot control the situation or the action itself okay we always have a solution okay sometimes solutions are I'm given up I'm done I tried this five times and it never worked I'm done like that's your choice that's your solution but you could always go 
okay, there's always a solution. Let's look at this. Like, who can I call? Who can help me? What can we do to fix the problem, change the situation, make things better, okay? There's always a solution. And there's always more than one solution, usually. So you can look at X, Y, and Z and figure out which one's best, okay? Okay, we also have our eating habits that can really, really affect the way we handle stress. I don't know if you've ever been uh, over anxiety and really stressed about something and then you stop and think that like maybe you haven't eaten and you're not handling the situation right because your body and your energy is like nothing and that you're very hangry and exhausted and that if you get a good meal in you, then usually you can handle the situation a little bit better, okay? And it's eating the right things. If you are somebody that is full of stress and anxiety and you um, drink soda pop and eat fast food all the time, you're probably gonna have worse stress and anxiety because you're not giving your body the proper nutrients that it needs. So sometimes we need to add in supplements because you're not getting the proper nutrients. Our, our soil's depleted, just face it. Like most of our food does not give us the nutrients that we need. We're not pioneers anymore. We don't have fresh food. And most of the stuff we eat has been sprayed with chemicals to help it speed up the process, ripen faster, last longer. So we're not getting the nutrients that we need. And supplementation, supplementation I want to say, is almost always needed, but really it's always needed. It's always needed. We're always lacking in something. We're not getting everything we need from diet and exercise alone. So we're going to put in the proper nutrients. We're going to try to eat healthier. We're going to try to make better choices. We're going to make sure we're drinking our water. And drinking our water is not just carrying around a water bottle all day long and going, oh, I drank it by the end of the day. Like, no, we need to get in our 100 ounces of water. Like, however much you weigh, take your weight, divide it in two. So if I'm a 100 pound person, I divide it in two. 50 is my number. That's how many ounces minimum I should drink. If I'm a 200 pound person and I divide that in half and get 100, 100 ounces is the minimum I should be drinking a day. So my goal is always 100 ounces of water a day, not quite 200 pounds, um, but I like to drink more because water is so beneficial. And if you exercise, sweat a lot, or in the sun, then you need to um, incorporate the extra water. If you're somebody that drinks a lot of soda pop, so you're getting carbonation in your body, carbonation actually dehydrates you. So if you're somebody that drinks a lot of soda, you need to up your water even more because all that carbonation is just dehydrating you. So to think that you're going to go get your diet soda to make you feel good, actually it's dehydrating you and making you not handle that stress even better. So sometimes the, the things we grab for that we think are comfort foods are really foods that are just magnifying those, those health issues to be worse. Okay exercise we're going to talk about exercise and basically it's getting your body moving sweating for a good 20 to 30 minutes i'm not talking you need to be a ninja warrior and go to the gym for 12 hours a day and lift weights and you know have a six pack of abs no we we want to just move your body if you go out and take a brisk walk after dinner maybe you haven't exercised forever and it's not gonna be a brisk walk it's just gonna be a walk you know, down the street to the mailbox, back again. That might be all you can handle at the moment, but we're gonna start moving our bodies, exercising. I always tell my kids, I go, hey, you have to exercise for the rest of your life. It's just a fact of life. We're not pioneers. We don't farm all day long. Some of you might have jobs that are manual jobs. You still should have something you do outside of work that is not your mundane everyday exercise. That even if you, like I have a sister that waitresses and does like 30,000 steps a day, she still needs something to get her body moving that's besides work. Even though she's burning all the calories she needs at work. So she chooses to do like yoga or swimming or things like that to get her body moving outside of work so that it's not just the mundane of work, but that you have exercise because that's so good for like your clarity and your brain function and spending time on yourself. Not because you like have to be there walking all day long. So you don't need 
to exercise necessarily to burn all the calories if you're burning them at work, but still to have some time to just give your body that rest and exercise and sweat that it needs to, okay? So you wanna move your body, okay? We talked about supplements. So sometimes you can make a plan. And I've heard people talk about five senses, and maybe you have a very high stress life. Maybe you have some kids that are dealing with stress um, from school, from homeschooling, from quarantine, from life in general. I have a daughter that struggles with anxiety and depression anyway, and it got a little bit worse through all of this. And, um, and so if you work on things and you think of five senses, okay, if you have stress, you want to be able to have a plan and attack it. So if you think of your five senses and you go, okay, uh, my mouth, my flavor, my, my taste, okay? What is something that you love to eat that maybe you could suck on? So maybe you're a minty kind of girl. Like, could you get some mints that you would just, if you feel stressed and you need to take a break, you can pop a mint in your mouth and you can just be like, oh, I'm just gonna relax for a minute or two. I'm just gonna like taste this mint. This flavor reminds me of the trip I took when I ate these mints and we, we sat on the beach for the first time. You know, something like that, that taste is gonna trigger something positive in your mind. So think of a positive thing in your mind that somewhere you, you ate something, you tasted something, taste reminds you of something. Maybe it's a lifesaver that you suck on, but maybe it's like a Jolly Rancher and it's fruity and it reminds you of a popsicle you had as a child on your porch, you know, whatever it is, that flavor is going to be a sense, okay? Then you have smell. I remember when I went to Europe, I used this brand new hair product. It was like a leave-in conditioner, and I had like a trial in this little packet to travel with me to Europe. So I was in Italy, and me and my husband were staying in this hotel, and I used this travel shampoo. Well, it was a leave-in conditioner. And um, it had this almost like a fruity but not strong smell. Every time I use that conditioner, every time I smell that smell, it reminds me of that awesome trip. So it smells. So what kind of smells can you associate with a positive thing in your life, a good memory, a good story, a good vacation that you can smell? We have so many like Febreze sprays or plug and scent things or the scentsy things that melt and you can incense that you burn, you know, like there's a lot of things. A lot of times I just like to open candles and not burn them. Just open them and have the scent. And so think of a scent that reminds you of a good memory, a good time, a good, a good, you know, place that you visited. And that can be something that you smell when maybe you're stressed. So maybe you're stressed and maybe you spray that the Hawaiian breeze for breeze or something, you know, and that helps you think of the good times. Okay. Then we have, so mouth sight. Okay. Maybe you print out a picture of that family vacation or that college trip or that time you hiked that awesome hike with some friends or the beach you sat on or the mountains that you like went to the cabin and visited, whatever it is. Um, maybe it's just a meadow in a country that you've never visited and you've always wanted to see, like, maybe it's like rolling hills in Ireland or something, you know, like whatever it is that is a picture that you could print and you could put in maybe an area you work. My, my favorite place is, um, in the room in my bathroom, the little closet where my toilet is, that wall right in front of where I sit. I put a lot of things on that wall um, because everyone has to sit and poop, right? And you should be pooping at least once a day. <laughs> so if you're not, you're constipated and we need to talk about that. But you should be sitting on that toilet before I go to bed at night. I sit on that toilet and pee one last time. And you can look at those pictures and just have great memories. And like, that can like calm your mind and your spirit and put good thoughts that takes, it's like it takes out the stress and puts in the good right before you get in bed, right before you go to bed, you'll be thinking happy thoughts. And then you're not thinking of that, that thing that stressed you out at work that day or 
the kids that, you know, wouldn't go to bed on time or whatever, and you're all stressed out, you know, whatever it is, you're going to put that happy picture. Maybe it's a goal that you're working towards and you want to buy a home or get a new car or take that family vacation. And you have a picture of the goal you're working towards. So you can look at it and just get all excited about the goal you're working towards and the happy place you're going to visit or, you know, the memories. Okay. So that's your site. And then hearing, um, maybe, you have uh, a good meditation you love to listen to. Um, maybe you're somebody that likes to have ocean waves in the background. Uh, my husband likes white noise of like birds chirping, you know, that just has birds chirping in the background. Sometimes the windows are open and I can't tell if he's got his bird chirping on the computer or he's got his bird chirping that are just outside because the weather's beautiful, you know? So sounds, um, I try not to have anything that has words. So whether it's piano solos or just music or meditation, um, a meditation, sometimes it's like a, I, I do it in the morning, you know, and it's like the words that repeat and stuff, but throughout the day, something that you could just play and take five minutes and relax. My, my very, very, very favorite, Pachelbel Canon in D major with ocean waves in the background. I lived in Hawaii for years and ocean waves are my sound. It's my peace, it's my home, it's my happy place but I love Pachelbel Canada in D major playing with the ocean waves behind. I used to have to, um, when I moved away from Hawaii, have ocean waves playing in the background so that I could go to sleep at night because I was so used to uh, living on in houses on the beach and that's how I went to sleep every night with the windows open and I could hear the waves. That when I moved away, I was like, oh no, I gotta have my ocean waves. So find that happy noise, okay? The last one is touch, okay? Maybe you're a uh, stress ball kind of person. Maybe you're a rock, like a flat rock kind of person. Um, I'm trying to think if I have my touch thing. Maybe you're a soft, like a soft, you know, I got this little soft heart. Um, you know, kids have their blankets that, you know, like the silk thing around their blanket or the twisty tie, like the ties in their, in their quilts and they rub them on their face, like whatever it is, like have something that's soft. Like maybe you love soft socks. And so if you're stressed, you could put those warm, cozy socks on and that just relaxes your body. Maybe you're a blanket kind of person. You're, you know, you have an awesome minky blanket or something and you wrap it around you and you just can like, just take a break and wrap that around you and just, you know, let the body relax and stuff. So have something that's touch, you know, I like, I like smooth rocks and like to just some that like your, your thumb can just like, you know, be in right there. I have a, I have these gems that like, I like to like to put in my hand and they're in this little glass, glass bowl right here. And I can just, you know, take my hand and rub it. I also have my tray of sand and like I have my, my beach right here in my office and, and I can, and I can touch the sand and feel the sand in my hands because the beach is just part of my heart inside. And so have something that you can touch. So those are good ways that you can make a plan ahead of time. Maybe you're, you love adult coloring books, you know, and you love, that's your like, okay, I'm going to take five minutes and, and just, color in a, an adult coloring book and like fill in all the little shapes and stuff. And that like helps for like relax and stuff like that. So hopefully you can make a plan. Adding in supplements really does help. You can get a good methylated vitamin that will give you the nutrients that you need. You can um, try oils. Oils are really good too. Like sometimes your oils you can use as your smell and maybe you have a, you know, maybe it's tangerine or something and you like put it on your arm right there and you know, and then you can smell it or, or dab your nose with one of your scents and stuff. So oils are another really good tool too that can add in smell. So whatever it is, find what works best for you. Maybe you, maybe you try five of the senses and two of them don't work for you because you're like, I can't think of anything. I don't know. But you have two that are like, oh my gosh, I love this and I'm going to use it every day. And you know, like I have a couple positive affirmations. I print a couple of copies of them and put them around my house, like in that toilet room, maybe in my office, maybe in a closet or something that I open up the door every time so that you have it around your house all the time. Have positive affirmations that just keep your mind thinking of positive things. If you like are somebody that's stressed and you're like, I'm never going to be able to do this. Your mind will actually, your brain will actually tell yourself that you won't get it done because you've just told yourself you can't get it done. 
But instead, if you turn your thinking and you go, how can I get this done? Your brain's actually going to answer that. And your brain's going to tell you how you're going to get that done. So a lot of times just changing the way you say things. Like if my kids come to my husband, they're like, I can never afford this. He's like, actually, let's change that and say, how can I afford this? There's, there's always a way. So how can I afford this? What would you have to do to earn the amount of money you need to how can I afford this? Instead of just, I can never afford that. Then you're just living in a scarcity mindset of like, I can never do it. I can never afford it. Instead of like, okay, how can I do that? How is this possible? How can I make this happen? How can I accomplish this? How can I work out this? Your brain will actually answer your questions for you and give you solutions. So switching your brain to positive, a great book is What You Say When You Talk to Yourself. It's a great, great book. Um, another great book is The Science of Getting Rich to change the way you think about money, to like not be stressed all the time. Everyone, you know, there's more people that go to bed at night worrying about, paying their bills than they do their help or their job or anything else because people stress about money so, so much. And sometimes that's life. And so it's like, okay, how can I make this work? How can I make my budget work? How can I afford this? How can we do this? How can I take care of my kids? Your brain will answer it and it will give it good solutions. So start listening to yourself, listening to your heart, listening to your gut, listening to that spirit that is there guiding you in your light. Like, there's bright light in the midst of all of this darkness in the world, and it's there to help us. So I hope you got something from that today. I hope that you will be able to calm the stress in your life and have a wonderful day. And thank you for joining me today.